What's up y'all, welcome to the video. Today I'm going to be showing you how to set up a basic attack combo system that you'd usually see in hack and slash games or RPGs. And by the end of the video, we're going to be able to make our third person character chain together different attack animations as long as the player keeps clicking the attack button. Before we get started, I'm going to show you what we have so far for our basic setup as a starting point. At the moment, our character can run and jump around the level as well as display a single slash attack and we're going to be replacing these attacks with our combo animations. So let's start off by setting up those animations. Okay, so the first thing you're gonna to wanna to do is you're gonna to wanna to come to wherever you have your character animations. I'm using a bunch that I got from Mixamo because they are fairly accessible. And we're gonna first take a look at our Knight Basic Slash. As you can see right here, we just have what we were currently using. And we're going to be replacing this with a combo animation. So we're going to have all of our possible attacks in one animation and this is so that we can split up the animation so in code it was a little bit more interchangeable so we're going to be splitting this animation um, via a montage and once we do that the code will be able to recognize where those breaks are in the animation and we'll be able to tell it whether to keep going or stop depending on where we're clicking so the first thing we'll want to do with this combo animation is we're going to want to turn on root motion and this is going to make it so that our capsule and our camera are following the animation and it isn't just going forward without anything else happening so it looks a little bit nicer. And once you have that done, you'll save. You're going to go back to your animation for the combo and you're gonna create an animation montage from that. I'll just move this into my montages folder. Where is it? Here we go, okay. And once you have that, we are now going to add some notifies to it. And what we're going to do for that is we're going to first, we're going to stop the animation and we're going to look around to see where the first attack ends. So right about there. And then we're going to right click over here, add notify. It's going to be a montage notify. And then we'll do the same for the second attack. Right about there. And then at the third attack, we don't really need to do that because after that is finished, we are pretty much going to be done with the animation. So what these notifies are doing, it is breaking up our animation. So when we go to look at stuff in code, it's going to take a look at this notify right here. And if we are still clicking or attacking, then it's going to play the next animation. It's going to check here, can't do, are we still attacking? And if so, it'll play it, but if not, it's going to stop the whole montage. So it only shows the one or two combos that we have attacked so far. And so now that we have that set up, let's get into setting this up in code. Okay, now taking a look at our header file, what we have so far for our character is just some references to our different montages. We have our jump montage and our light attack montage. And we have a few methods for um, our jump override and um, our attacking. But what we're gonna do is we're gonna make a few quick updates so that we can get our combo system working. So.
Okay, so what we have done here is we have added an event handler for our handle on montage notify begin. And this is where in the code we're going to be able to see when our notifications in the montage are happening. So we'll be able to act upon that. And we are going to be keeping track of a combo attack index and that's gonna allow us to track how many um, attacks that we clicked. And we can then play the montage based on this attack index. And lastly, in order to uh, bind this event, we're going to need to do that on begin play, and that is not currently in the character by default, so we are overriding our begin play method there. And so now that our header is all set, let's get into the CPP file and start to really implement this. Okay, and now back in the CPP, let's first implement our begin play method. So what we are doing here is we are getting our anim instance and we are binding our notification event handler to this event right here. And so now that we have that set up, we can now go and implement our event. So essentially what we are doing here is in our attack method, if we are already playing the montage and attacking, then instead of trying to play a different montage or play that montage again, we're actually just going to increase our attack index and set it to one. And by the time that it hits a notification in the montage, it's going to decrement that combo index. And if it ever gets to zero, then it's going to stop that montage. So essentially, if you keep on clicking, this index right here is going to keep going. And if you just let it go and you're not attacking, then the index is going to decrease and it'll stop the montage. So if we keep on clicking, we should be able to chain the attack and the montage will go all the way through. But if not, then it's going to stop at the notifications that we, um, that we set up previously in our montage. And so now that we have that all set up, now let's go test this in our game. All right, and once you have compiled that, we're gonna go into our character blueprint. And wherever you have your montage set up for your attack, we're actually going to replace this basic slash with our combo montage. And if we test that, you should see that we should be able to play one. And if we click twice, see, it's going through two. And if we try to go through the whole animation, it lets us. So there you have it, we now have our basic attack combo system functional and we can now take any attack combo animation, split up the different attacks in that animation and play a number of those attacks based on the number of our consecutive clicks. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to drop a like and subscribe if you enjoy seeing this type of content and want to stay up to date with all of my tutorials. 
Also, if you have anything you'd like to see me do in future videos, be sure to leave a comment about that down below and I might just do it. Today's tutorial was a bit shorter, so if you enjoy the shorter tutorials where I cover how to implement very specific features for games, feel free to comment that as well. And until then, I hope you all have a great day. I'll see you all in the next video.